Welcome to DSC University. I'm Dennis Wilkins, tech support and training here at Dealer Supply Company, North Carolina. In this video, I'm going to take you through the defrost board on our new platform series heat pumps. So let's get the training board out and dive right into it. All right, here we go. Here's our heat pump low voltage training board that we're going to use in this video. Of course, we here we've got our air handler, we've got our indoor unit. There's our control board there. The board's kind of separated like that. And we have our outdoor unit over here. There's our reverse and valve contactor. Here's our defrost board. This is what we're going to focus on today. We're going to look into these two sensors that we have here, kind of show you how to troubleshoot those. A couple settings on the board here. Also, I'm going to put a pretty good picture up. The fault codes are on these boards, believe it or not. As you can see, they're very small. Um, but I'm going to put a I'm going to put a picture up there, and we can see we can kind of go through that. All right, let's take a look at our sensors here. The one here to the top left, that's going to be our outdoor ambient temperature sensor. That's the one that's going to hang down on the outdoor unit. And the one to the top right, that's going to be our coil sensor. Both of these are two-wire thermistors, but the coil thermistor is a three-pin plug, but the middle pin is a dummy pin. That's so we get them plugged in the right place. All right, here's our fault codes on our defrost board here. We have two LEDs, LED 1 and 2. I'm just going to kind of run down through these here. Um, of course, if they're both off, we obviously have no power, no 24 volts to the board. We have our coal sensor failure. We have AMB sensor failure. Those are the two sensors we're talking about today. The AMB sensor is our ambient temperature sensor. Um, if they're both flashing, that's normal operation. We have low pressure lockout, high pressure lockout, low pressure switch open, high pressure switch open, and defrost operation. The alternating flashing is going to be our five minute delay. That can be bypassed by shorting the test pins. Also, you can short the test pins to clear a fault code. Um, that's going to then throw it into a five minute delay and then you just short the test pins again. Just shorting it one second um, will do that. One thing to point out, you only get these coal sensor failure or ambient sensor failure codes if there is a short or a break in the sensor itself or it's way out of range. Um, if it's just a little out of range, which will still cause the coil to freeze up, then we still need to check our sensor and change the sensor. All right, one more thing I want to point out on this board here, since we're talking about our sensors. Our coil sensor does have a defrost termination temperature. Once this board sees that, it will stop defrost cycle. Now, the dip switch is here on the board. You can set that temperature, depending on where you're at in the country. Pretty simple, two, two dip switch here. We have uh, the different temperatures you can set it for are 50, 60, 70, and 80. Let's start with the coil sensor here. I said a couple basic tools here. We're going to need a multimeter here. We're going to put that on ohms. That's our horseshoe. Kind of an upside down horseshoe there, All right? The other tool we're going to need, you need to know what temperature you're checking this thermistor at. Um, a lot of guys like to strap this to that, kind of let it sit a second, kind of see, you know, get a more accurate reading on what you're checking it against. Um, if this thing is still on the coil, right, and the coil is frozen, not going to be able to check that. Best thing to do is just go ahead and take it off, unplug it from the board. Now let's check it. This is the fun part. Holding these two on there. This is where your helper comes in. All 
All right, this one is a 9.4, 9.5, give it a second. Let's go with 9.5. And what are we checking that against? Well, we're checking that at 72 degrees, so we're gonna have to go to our My Root app and look at the chart. All right, once you've downloaded the app, this is what it's gonna look like here. We're gonna click on the Rude button there. It's gonna open up. You might see a few things here that you don't have. Swipe over, we're gonna click on Product Technical Support. That's gonna open up. This screen here, this is where you're gonna to go to your equipment Maybe find your spec sheets, installation manuals on all of our equipment. But today we're going to click on at your fingertips, the blue button there in the middle. A lot of great information there for us in the field. Once that loads, we're going to see at the top there, temp resistance. That's going to be the chart we're going to use today. We're going to click on that. I'm going to scroll down. It's going to bring us a uh, basically a PDF chart here. We can click on that. You can save these on your phone. So we're going to zoom in here so that we can see what we're working on based on the temp that we had in the previous video. I'm going to zoom in there. There we can see our temperatures that we're checking our thermistor at and the readings that we're gonna have on our meter and we can check our thermistor against that. All right, so after getting our readings here, we checked our thermistor resistance at 73 degrees. We got 9.50. The chart says we needed to have 10.76. By the book, we are allowed 5% plus or minus if we add 5% to our 9.50, we get 10.22, which means we are still off. And in this case, we need to replace the thermistor. All right, so you got a couple options here when you need to replace the sensors. You can pick them up separately. They come in a pack, one for the coil, one for the outdoor ambient. Or if you pick up the defrost board itself, it will come with these sensors in the box with it. So remember when we're replacing the defrost board on the heat pump, always replace the sensors as well. Thanks for watching DSC University. I'm Dennis Wilkins, tech support and training here at Dealer Supply Company, North Carolina.